Could science show consciousness existed before space-time? What if the Big Bang wasn't the actual beginning? What if something came before it? Something we all experience every moment of our lives? Consciousness. We've all been taught the classic story. The universe exploded into being, matter clumped together, stars lit up, planets formed, and finally, on at least one little blue marble, the complex fizzing of neurons in a brain gave rise to us, to self-awareness. But what if that story has the plot completely backwards? New questions at the very edge of physics are forcing us to rethink reality itself. They explore the mind-bending possibility that consciousness isn't just a happy accident of biology, but a fundamental aspect of the universe that might have existed before space and time. We're starting to investigate a stunning, speculative link between the quantum world and an ancient, universal awareness. This journey will challenge everything you think you know about who you are and your place in the cosmos, the problem. To get why this is such a revolution, we first have to face a giant mystery that science has struggled to solve, the hard problem of consciousness. Neuroscientists can map every pathway in your brain. They can watch it light up when you see a familiar face or hear your favorite song. They can tell you which chemicals are linked to joy or sorrow. But they can't explain why you have an inner subjective experience at all. It's like knowing every ingredient in a cake and the exact oven temperature, but having no idea why it tastes like chocolate. There's no equation in classical physics that accounts for the feeling of awe at a sunset or the sting of heartbreak. The standard view is that consciousness is emergent, that if you just get enough wires and computations in a brain, awareness magically switches on. But nobody can explain how mindless matter can suddenly begin to feel. This colossal failure has pushed some brilliant minds to look for answers not in our everyday world, but in the bizarre and ghostly realm of the very small the quantum doorway. Welcome to quantum mechanics, where reality takes a vacation. Down here, particles can be in multiple places at once, a state called superposition. They can be linked across galaxies, instantly mirroring each other's behavior in a phenomenon called quantum entanglement. But the biggest clue the one that first cracked open the door to a link with consciousness is the famous observer effect. Here's the gist. In the quantum realm, particles don't seem to have definite properties until they're measured. Before you look, a particle is just a wave of possibilities. The moment it's measured, that wave collapses and the particle snaps into one single definite state. Now let's be clear. The mainstream view in physics is that the observer doesn't have to be a conscious person. Any interaction with a measuring device will do the trick. But the ambiguity of that word, observer, led pioneering physicists like John Wheeler to propose a radical idea, the participatory anthropic principle. What if the universe in some way requires conscious participants to bring it into being? It's a hugely speculative idea, but it raises a profound question. Does our awareness play a more active role in reality than we ever imagined? Evidence and Theories. Section 1. The Spooky Connection. If the observer effect opened a crack in the wall between mind and matter, Quantum entanglement is what some thinkers believe blows the door off its hinges. Einstein famously called it spooky action at a distance. If you have two particles that are entangled, measuring a property of one, like its spin, instantly tells you the spin of the other, even if it's on the other side of the universe. No signal travels between them. They seem to be connected outside of space and time. For most physicists, 
This is just a weird but accepted feature of reality. But for some philosophers and physicists, it points to something deeper. If everything in the universe exploded from a single point in the Big Bang, then maybe in a quantum sense, everything is still connected. Could this universal entanglement be the physical scaffolding for a universal consciousness? Now, that's a massive philosophical leap, not a proven scientific fact. But it's a leap inspired by the demonstrated weirdness of our quantum world. Section 2 the quantum brain. So if consciousness is quantum, where could it be happening? For decades, this question was a showstopper. Then, in the 1990s, Nobel Prize-winning physicist Sir Roger Penrose and anesthesiologist Stuart Hameroff proposed one of the most controversial and fascinating theories out there. Orchestrated Objective Reduction, or ORCH-OR, their idea is that consciousness isn't born from the chatter between neurons, but from much deeper quantum processes happening inside them. They pointed to tiny protein structures called microtubules, which form the skeleton of our cells. Penrose and Hameroff proposed these microtubules could act as quantum computers, with their electrons entering a state of quantum superposition they theorize that each time these quantum states collapse, a moment of conscious experience is created. For years, this theory was widely dismissed. The main criticism was that the brain is too warm, wet, and noisy to support the fragile quantum states needed for this to work. But the story doesn't end there. Recently, the debate got a jolt of new energy. Studies are now suggesting that anesthetics, drugs that specifically switch off consciousness, appear to interfere with quantum level activities within these very microtubules. A 2024 study, for instance, found that drugs interfering with microtubules also interfered with the action of anesthesia, lending support to the idea that microtubules are central to consciousness. Other research suggests these microtubulae structures might be far better at protecting delicate quantum states than critics believed. This is far from definitive proof, but it's beginning to move the orch or theory from a fringe idea toward plausible, testable science, even if it remains highly controversial. Section 3. Before space-time. This brings us to the ultimate question. If consciousness is a quantum phenomenon, did it have to wait for brains? Did it even have to wait for our universe? Some cosmological models propose that the answer is no. While Einstein's theories predict the universe began from an infinitely dense point, a singularity, many physicists see this as a sign that the theory is incomplete. Newer models, like loop quantum gravity, envision not a big bang, but a big bounce. In this scenario, a previous universe contracted until the force of quantum gravity became repulsive, causing it to bounce back out, creating the expanding universe we live in today. There was no true beginning, just an endless cycle. If models like this are on the right track, it means a quantum realm existed before our familiar space-time emerged. This dovetails with an ancient philosophical idea called panpsychism, which proposes that consciousness is a fundamental property of matter itself, that even a particle like an electron has some simple form of experience. Once dismissed as mysticism, panpsychism is now being seriously reconsidered by some philosophers and neuroscientists as a potential solution to the hard problem. When you combine these two concepts, a pre-Big Bang quantum state from cosmology and a fundamental consciousness from panpsychism, you arrive at an astonishing possibility. Maybe consciousness wasn't created within the universe. Maybe the universe was created within consciousness. The Grand Conclusion We've journeyed from the mystery inside our own heads to the strange frontiers of quantum physics 
and the very edge of time. It must be said, the ideas we've explored are radical, speculative, and are far from proven science. They represent a paradigm shift in the kinds of questions we're brave enough to ask. For centuries, we've assumed that matter is the foundation and consciousness is just a late, lucky accident. But these theories dare to tell a different story. The observer effect's ambiguity led some to wonder if consciousness plays a role in shaping reality. Quantum entanglement reveals a deep interconnectedness that seems to defy space. The orc-or theory, while still controversial, offers a potential mechanism for how quantum processes could create consciousness in a brain. And modern cosmology opens the door to a time before time where the quantum realm was all there was. None of these things, on their own, prove that consciousness predated space-time. But taken together, they sketch out a coherent, if still blurry, picture. A picture where awareness isn't something the universe has, but something the universe is. It suggests that our individual minds aren't isolated islands but waves in a vast cosmic ocean of awareness. We may not just be stardust that learn to think, we may be the universe's way of experiencing itself, and that experience might just be eternal. This is a journey that's really just beginning. What do you think? Is consciousness a fundamental force of nature or just a clever trick of the brain? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy wrestling with life's biggest questions, make sure to subscribe for more journeys to the frontiers of what we know.